Hello everyone, I am Samir Verma. This is second lecture in the series of design of steel structures. And today we will be discussing the types of joints, basically the types of reverted joints. So first type of joint is lap joint. So what happens in a lap joint? You can see there are two plates here. These are two plates connected using rivets. So what is the characteristics of lap joint? This is the least efficient joint. Why is it, why is it uh, the least efficient joint? Because the line of action of two forces are different. So the line of action of two forces are different. You can see here one force is here and another one is here. So these are the line of action of two forces are different. These two forces will form a couple and the plates will bend. So additional bending stresses are developed in the rivets. That's why they are least efficient. And the rivets are subjected to single shear and bearing. So if you will uh, see the free body diagram of a rivet, then there will be a single bearing force and single shearing force. So another type of another type of uh, joint that is single cover bud joint. Here you can see the two. There are two main plates connected using rivets, and there is one cover plate. So this is your cover plate. These two are your main plates. So what is the characteristic of this single cover bud joint? The characteristic is that the line of action of the two forces are same, but connection is not symmetrical. So it is slightly more efficient than lap joint. Here. The forces are in symmet uh, are in the same line of action, but it is not symmetrical. The connection is not symmetrical. Here also the rivets are subjected to single shear and single bearing. Third type of joint we have double cover bud joint. In this, we have two main plates, these two main plates, and two cover plates these two cover plates connected by rivets. So the characteristic of this joint is it is the most efficient joint because the line of action of two forces are same and the connection is symmetrical. Here the line of action of forces are same and the connection is also symmetrical. The rivets are subjected to double shear and double bearing. So if you'll see the free body diagram here, then there will be two sharing sharing stresses and two bearing forces at the surface. Moving forward. Now, here we will discuss the failures of a riveted joint. How a riveted joint can fail? So, a riveted joint can fail either there can be a failure of rivet or failure of plates so in failure of uh, rivets we have shear failure of rivets and bearing failure of rivets what happens in the shear failure of rivet the rivets will get cut and in bearing failure the shape of the rivet will change from circular section to elliptical section Another one is failure of plates. In failure of plates, we have four type of failure. First is shear failure. Second is splitting failure. Third is bearing failure. And fourth is tearing failure. So what happens in shear failure? Here you can see. In shear failure, the cracks will occur parallel to the direction of load. This is the direction of load and here, here the cracks will form here, right? And in splitting failure, the plate will split into two. Same way, in a bearing failure, the plate will take this type of shape. It will bend from here. And the tearing of plate, te tearing failure, the cracks will form in the 
direction perpendicular to the load so if this is the direction of load the cracks will form like this in this direction so first thing that we can note here is that by providing a proper edge and end distances we can prevent shear failure splitting failure and bearing failure of plate so uh, if you have to prevent the, these failure then you will have to provide proper edge and end distances edge and end distances uh, i have explained uh, in the previous video you can have a link uh, in the description for that video so while designing a joint tearing strength of plate should be less than shearing and bearing strength of rivets so here it is mentioned that tearing strength of plate should be less than shearing and bearing strength of rivet so basically they are saying that uh, the uh, the plate should tear first rather than the shearing and bearing of the rivets because rivet failure is more dangerous than component failure fine next we are discussing specification of pitch specification for pitch of rivets so uh, for designing this will be very helpful first we have minimum pitch of rivet so what is the minimum pitch of rivet that you have to keep it is 2.5 into nominal dia of rivet and what is the nominal dia of rivet see if this is a rivet then this will be the diameter and it is called the nominal diameter so minimum pitch will be 2.5 into nominal dia of the rivet next minimum edge and end distance so what will be the minimum and edge edge and end distance it will be 1.5 times gross dia of the rivet and 1.7 times gross dia of the rivet 1.5 for machine cut elements and 1.7 times gross dia for hand cut elements here you will have to notice one thing that gross dia of rivet is different than the nominal dia and we will be discussing it in a moment so next is maximum edge distance so what is the edge distance that can be maximum edge distance that can be kept it is 12 times t into epsilon where epsilon is given by under root 250 upon fy fy is the yield strength and why this is provided it is provided to prevent separation of plates to prevent corrosion and to stop the entry of water etc here t is the thickness of the plate next point is maximum pitch of rivets or welds for compression members here first we are discussing about the compression members so what will be the maximum pitch maximum pitch is 12 t or 200 mm whichever is less either it will be 12 times the thickness or 200 mm whichever is less so t is the thickness of the thinner plates so here you will have to notice this thing that t is the thickness of the thinner plate so there can be uh, various plates so t will be the thinnest plate and next maximum pitch of rivets for tension members and for tension members here for tension members earlier we have uh, seen for compression member now for tension member it is 16 t and 200 mm whichever is less so for the compression member we have for the compression member we have 12 t or 200 mm and for tension member we have 16 t or 200 mm next one is staggered riveting so what is staggered riveting see when when the rivets are not in the same line they are in different lines fine so they are not in the same line so it is called staggered riveting so for staggered riveting where uh, gauge distance is 
should not be greater than 75 mm so this is your gauge distance this one it should not be more than 75 mm the maximum pitch for compression and tension member can be exceeded by 50 percent so you can increase that uh, compression for compression and tension member maximum pitch can be increased by 50 percent so if it was uh, so it was a uh, 12 so it was 12 t that means it can be that means it can be now 18 t 18 times the thickness here sorry okay and uh, for the tension member it was 16 t so it will be now 24 t so you'll have to increase it by 50 percent and 200 will be 300 okay next is maximum pitch of tack rivets so it is kept 32 t or 300 mm whichever is less so here you can uh, see the diagram So T is the thickness of the sorry T is the thickness of the thinner member. So what are tack rivets? Tack rivets are the rivets used to make two two structural components act as a single unit. They will not take any structural load. So this will make two structural components act as a single unit. This will make it a single unit. So and it will not take any kind of structural load. Now I told you earlier that gross diameter of a rivet was different than the nominal diameter. So what is gross diameter? Gross diameter will be nominal diameter plus 1.5 mm for the diameter. This is nominal diameter if it is less than or equals to 25 mm or it will be nominal diameter plus 2 mm for diameter for nominal diameter more than 25 mm it is for WSM method and for LSM method gross diameter will be uh, nominal diameter plus 1 mm for uh, nominal diameter 12 to 14 mm uh, nominal diameter plus 2 mm for 16 to 24 mm nominal dia nominal dia plus 3 mm for diameter more than 24 mm so here 5 denotes the nominal diameter so let us take one example of a joint so uh, let us consider the riveted joint you'll have to find the maximum permissible value of pitch so what will be the maximum permissible value for the pitch so these are the four options given here so if you look uh, into the diagram here this is the top view this is first plate this is second plate these are connected by using rivets this is the pitch of the rivet so here you can say this is compressive the forces are compressive and this is the side view so you can see that there are, there is one main plate and two cover plates main plate is 12 mm cover plate is 6 mm at the top and bottom and it is connected using rivet so you'll have to find the maximum permissible pitch so what is the maximum permissible pitch so here first point is permissible sorry the plates are under compression here you can see that plates are under compression so maximum pitch for rivets when plates are under compression we we will take 12 t or 200 mm whichever is less so if we if we do to uh, 12 times the thickness thickness again you'll have to notice this thickness is the thinnest thinner plate thickness of the thinner plate right so 12 times t or here the thinner plate is 6 mm so it will give you 72 mm and 200 mm which which one is less 72 mm so here 72 mm will be the correct answer 
Now, if in case uh, this was not compressive, if it was, let us say, if it was tensile, then so in the above problem, if the plates are under tension, if the plates are under tension, then then the maximum pitch of rivet will be 16 t or 200 mm, whichever is less. So 16 t is 16 into 6, that is 96. So answer would have been 96. If it would have been the tension last point to note here is that single riveted joint there are two types of joints single riveted joints and double riveted joint okay so in single riveted joints means single row of rivets not one rivet so it is single row of rivet fine double riveted joints mean two rows of rivets not two rivets so if you see here this one is this diagram is double riveted joint so uh, uh, that is all for today thank you so much